So my my family and I are champion foosball players, which I know sounds weird, but it's it's real. And then uh, I started this web series uh, through All Things Comedy. It's on YouTube, and I bring comedians on. We play three rounds. We do different things to try and make it easier for them to win. And then when they lose, um, I get to do humiliating punishments to them. So when right. Adam and Brad came on, um, they ate <laughs> milk bones. We dog, lost, by the way. Dog treats, yeah. They Everyone lost. loses because yeah. Kelsey's phenomenal. And I'm sure you've played some people that you're like, oh, you're not bad. There's no way in hell you were going to fucking beat me. <laughs> but you're not. You're better than the last five maybe people we had because you. I'm terrible. Like it, right? I'm pretty bad. <laughs> It's all, I mean, we've done 27 episodes now, so it's a little bit of a blur on who's That's fine. skill level. But well, I was I doing it trying with to... the dwarf, so if it's <laughs> that much of a blur, that is on you. Because I feel like only one episode featured someone uh, who, stood on who an looked over the age. Who, who stood on an apple box who looked under the age of nine, but was over the age of 30. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> okay. This is true. I remember you trying to use a lot of um, distraction tactics. Yes. Uh, a lot of <laughs> cursing my family. You, I can't remember what you said, but it was so funny. I, I don't remember. But you, when I send the show out to people to potentially have it get turned into a TV okay. show or whatever, your guys' episode is, I send yours and Steve and Aziz's. No way. Mm-hmm. Because those are my two, like two absolute favorites. Where you feel like this embodies what the show is. Mm-hmm. Enough fun, mm-hmm. enough banter. Yep. That's awesome. That yeah. makes me feel good. Why? Because we had just, so much fun. You brought it. It was so fun. The energy was so great. You guys are hilarious. Your chemistry together is. And you off the hook. were great with us, though. And Thank that's another you. piece of it that you need to highlight for people when they're watching. Is oh, that like you're not thanks. just a talking head beating people in foosball. You're keeping the conversation going. You're being funny. You're throwing in quick uh, quips. Thanks. And then okay, so then at the end, mm-hmm. if the comedians lose, yeah. Kelsey then has punishments that you can pick from. One was like. You know, uh, you know, we'll have uh, Mike Bertolino put a finger in your ass or something, and then like Al Magic will sneeze on you pre-COVID. Hey, it's Herbert, mm-hmm. and you're listening to the About Last Night podcast. You slippery little son of a bitch. This is a good place to start. Welcome back to the show. Kelsey Cook here. Hey, guys. I was like, how much of this are being recorded? <laughs> None of it. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't start till I get truly fired up, almost have a mental breakdown, and then I go. And let's go. Brink of tears. Yeah. And then we start. Great question. When's the last time you cried? But like, how oh. about this? Let me break it down for you. Yeah. I want to hear the last time you sad cried, and then the last time, like, you turned up the <laughs> Ani DeFranco or what, what have you. Yeah. Ex girlfriend from high school used to cry and listen to that. So that's what really? that. yeah. it's like she wouldn't go out of her way. Okay. But I feel like when we were in the car, <laughs> it was always on when the tears simultaneously start happening. Yeah. Where I was like, Did you plan this? Because I have no judgment for that. Right. I definitely when my sixth grade girlfriend dumped me, would turn up Can You for the Love Tonight from the Lion King soundtrack and sob. <laughs> is that because I didn't have a dad? I don't know. Welcome back to the show. Kelsey Cook is that our is guest. So on brand for you. Yeah. A Lion King song. Just, yeah, I don't know, sad, but also I think I wanted to milk the most out of my emotions. Who doesn't get choked up to Can You Feel the Love Tonight? When it came out, that song did a number on a lot of kids. Oh my God, the movie theater, it when it picks up, yeah. that, that's, it was epic. You feel that in every bone in your body. You have that's to. a lot. Yeah, even in the bones you didn't know what to do with yet. You were <laughs> yeah. like, is that, I got a boner during this song, is that what, now? Is my dick crying is my too? Dick Why is too? what's coming out of this? Is my dick crying too? A one act by Kelsey Cook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> a one woman show is my dick I crying do, too. I do love those titles to shows or anything that don't have a lot to do with like maybe. You're right. Like that would have like you know because you could do a great one woman show just knowing your story, knowing you, and it'd be awesome. Uh, Thank you. But to have a title like that that is never mentioned. <laughs> It's just like me opening a bakery or something, and yeah. I keep waiting for like, but when is the dick gonna cry? Yeah, and made, and there's like a and there's like penis paraphernalia that you sell, <laughs> yeah, like, like in but... brand with the with the show, and everyone's like, does this? Or maybe you just say it at the very end. Yeah, 
Oh. I don't know. I don't know how to tie that in. I feel like we should start doing that for our merch on the road. Mm. That we just sell merch that has absolutely nothing to do with our act. That's how you know you're you've made it. Yeah. Again, that's some Larry the Cable Guy shit. You could yes. sell like a weird like you know when you like those animal children's toy boxes where you pull the string and it's like a rooster goes and it's just Larry going <laughs> and kick a diddle did it or, or, or wow. I, I also just forgot what a rooster sounded like for a minute and then tried to do it through Larry the Cable Guy's voice and and, ma- and make that the thing of why I didn't know. Cockadoodle did it is, I think, what I said. It's like scattered. <laughs> yeah. It was like a little bit of a We talked jazz. about Lou Bega on this podcast <laughs> no oh. less than two weeks ago. I mean, bless Lou Bega. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that my dad was I'm just <laughs> ripping Mambo Number no. 5 on Trumpet Tuesdays not that long ago. Was he really? Mm-hmm. That was one of the requests. I mean, Tr- if you ask people, hey, what's a trumpet song you want to hear? A lot of people love Lou Bega. They want that Mambo number five. Everybody wants that Mambo, Mambo number five. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> all right. Put a pin in that. Okay. Let me go back to the um, the cry question. The crying? Last time oh, you cried Adam. hard like you meant it um, over something. And, and if it's too personal, you don't have to get into it. But if it's... Uh, something like truly about an hour ago I got choked up and um yeah. and my fiance was like well you're crying and I literally just looked at a TikTok of my niece Aww. and it was just really cute and I just like missed her and I got really like choked up and she was like you're crying and she's like you're adorable and I was like stop saying that you're making me cry more yeah. and then she's like why and I was like I just miss her <laughs> that's so sweet but but I feel like I have you know it, it you know a sad movie, a sad bank commercial. I'm not going to sob, but I well up pretty easy. You get there fast, yeah. Do you? Yeah, I think the older I get, the more I'm prone to that. Um, I mean, we we won't get into it. But yeah. like, my genuine answer is a family health thing yes. that's been happening this yes. past year. Yes. That had me crying every day for the better part of this year. Um, and But I will ask you, can we talk about like recent movies that have made us cry? Yes. Okay. Because that's also, that's probably the more fun answer. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I don't get too heavy too fast. Do the, but, real quick though, do yes. you take, is a good cry, even when it is something for not fun reasons? Yeah. Cathartic in a way? Like when you. For sure. Right? Yes. Because you somehow, and maybe this is just me, but like, if it one thing gets it going, I'll sometimes bring in a couple other things just hey. to be like, hey, uh, emotional baggage from 10th grade, you want to get in on this cry <laughs> we're having? Because we could maybe kill a couple go, birds go, go. <laughs> with one's cry, you know? Getting fi- yeah, just funneling, tag-teaming your past <laughs> into your cry. Getting parachuters off the plane. Everybody's going right now. <laughs> We're getting off this. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I totally think once those uh, floodgates open, I'm I'm very big on just getting stuff out, yeah. not bottling it. But What's the movie? Um, Any okay. time of day. Okay. these They're random because it, do- it doesn't seem like they would be crying films, but... Arrival and A Quiet Place. Wreck me. Arrival? That was with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. Okay. When she... Have you seen it? No. Oh, well then... Is it like I don't want to give spoilers. Um, it's the one with the aliens and there's like some time travel involved. Whoa. There's just a part in it that... Ooh, it the getcha. Get, where it's it what? Gets it's you. They're having to separate or what? It's. I, I don't want to even tell you because you got to see it. You're not. You're I just already like, know this about myself. I just watched a movie that. <laughs> I appreciate. More people need to do that and just go look at me. I'm not going to do it. So yeah, just tell I'm me. trying to <laughs> lean into that. Be yes. like, let's save both of our yeah. times right now. But guess what? It sounds like a movie I'd want to see. It's I love so both good. those actors. It's so good. It kind of. And the fact that you didn't want to give anything away <sighs> makes me actually want to see it. So good. But I just know how I am with movies. They Tarantino it a little bit okay. where. You see in the beginning that she's got her daughter and that there isn't a dad in the picture, but you don't know why. Yeah. And then later on, you find out that it was Jeremy Renner. But because she got this ability from the aliens to see through time as this nonlinear thing. Mm -hmm. This sounds like I'm on drugs right now. It does. Well, you are. We Just for the listeners, uh, Kelsey outside was, it looked like a boot she was smoking out of, but... (laughs) It definitely was on fire, and she was inhaling <laughs> gas, smoke. Uh, we'll check in on the rest of the uh, how the giggles go up and down in pitch. No, you don't. You don't smoke pot. I do edibles. Fuck yeah. Yeah. We'll put a pin in that. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Jeremy Renner is it's the dad just, of the kid. It's just so good. Okay, great. It's it's not worth going in, going into more detail because people are like, 
what is they want to hear about your fucking drug habits yeah i want to hear about my drug habits is, but it's uh, worth seeing is it because of jeremy renner or like does he make you like it's their love so, story and the Adams seeing is good. what like why they couldn't be together Oof. and it is those are good stories just very powerful so that and like then, the notebook yeah. classic you want them to be together and they can't but yes. they find a way and then they die together <laughs> sorry spoiler alert <laughs> Um, <laughs> Fuck off! Yeah. If you're upset about a spoiler from what? Ninety nine? No, two thousand something. Yeah, what a great movie though. <laughs> so great. Have you seen A Quiet Place? The first one, yeah. Yes. Okay. I also haven't seen the second yet. Uh, really did, good. What happened to you emotionally during the first one? Um, I remember being like, "Wow, this is incredibly well done and mm-hmm. good for Krasinski." And then I start my mind wanders and I go, "How cool is it that like." They're married and they're like just are both at the level where like oh my God. They, he can just be like, hey, baby, you want to be in this? Oh. And for sure, her star power at that time definitely added to it. Yeah. Um, the things a, I would do to watch them have sex. Just come on. How do what you think couple. they do it? I feel like they are really adventurous or is it like boring married sex now? I feel like they are very passionate. Like they they maintain eye contact. Yeah. Do you think she makes him do a British accent sometimes? I would love that. Just to like... I would love to see like, it. Look, we live in your country more often than not, so help me out here. Get it out. Because you know out. how I came before you? Yeah. In London Town, <laughs> where yeah. I heard a certain, uh, you know, tone yeah. of voice, and yours is very different and not... I mean, you tell me, is he have like a good... Cruz, he's got a good voice, right? Absolutely. Can a voice like make or break a, a relationship? <laughs> Yeah. Even a first date. Yeah. Right out of the gate. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I've been around a guy, though, that I've been like, Lee, this voice. That hasn't. Okay, that was my question, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but but I've been really turned on by people's voices. Whoa. But yeah, I haven't met a guy that I've been like, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it work with a voice. But and I think having a nice voice can be a bonus. And was it like the way he like ordered? Did he have a cool like... <laughs> Or was it like Lawrence Fishburne? And he was like, can I get the broccoli cheddar soup? And we were like, and I'll take a towel to go. <laughs> I love that. He's a real... Yeah, he took you to Panera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Where yeah. do you think I'm going? <laughs> soup plantation, date one. <laughs> 11 in the morning on a Wednesday. 11 a.m. on a Wednesday. A hot broccoli cheddar. That's a perfect joke. <laughs> Middle of July. Awesome. Um... Are you writing stuff right now that you're really fired up about? Like you're touring a lot, you're going on stage yeah. a lot, you have multiple spots tonight. Are you fired mm-hmm. up about doing three? To me, feels like the yeah. the golden number. Yeah. I've done five out here. I've done six out here, and it's just Oof. not. I'm like, what are you? What are you trying to? What are you? And it's really just overbooking right. and forgetting, and then trying to make it all work because you're like, that sounds fun and it sounds cool, and and, and every it's time I've had a, on Instagram for sure. And there's a yeah. few, yeah, but. I've, uh, that, nobody gives a shit. Yeah, nobody does anymore, but I do feel like there was a time a few years ago that it was like, oh. Well, look at my spots, yeah. Yeah. And then you just go, these are just for me. Mm -hmm. Who fucking cares? Mm -hmm. Pick different things. Be selective in your braggadocious ways. For sure, Um, but, uh, but then it was like too much of like having to time out getting to one spot to the next. That's crazy. And three, I feel like is manageable, manageable as far as you being like, and you said tour at one club, so that's even easier. Yeah. But, you know, s- scheduling out with the bookers of like, hey, can I go early or go late is much easier with three. Right. Are you pumped about your spots? You have a few things you're working on that you're like, oh, I can't wait to like really fine tune that three times tonight. Yeah, I am. I've been trying to do one or two new bits a weekend. Cool. And just, you know, keep like it that. going. Or else, because if you're doing Especially the exact, hour. yeah, if you're doing the exact same hour, five times in 72 hours you start to feel like you're losing it yeah. it's just it's a weird rep- repetition and so i think it's better to keep trying to do new stuff as often as possible but yeah i'm um been working a lot on the divorce material working uh mm. about like dating app stuff and cool. kind of life post divorce um how was that to jump into um first of all brian is the mic okay in front of her face yeah, it sounds okay. good in here. I got the headphones. But I mean, like, uh, should we oh, drag it down a little? Maybe, uh, Kelsey, am I drag it down just a little bit? No, you're good. Face. Just a little bit, yeah. There you go. That's better. Yeah, that's money. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Better. Yeah, yeah. Here, turn okay. look at me. 
Perfect. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Totally fine. I want to see that beautiful face. Oh, thank you. That uh, on the dating app face now, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What's your profile pic? Um, what is my... Oh, it's just, um, it's like a comedy promo shot. Great. Mm -hmm. I think that's the move. Yeah. Peep, I, I feel like... Hey, let them know that like you're successful right out of the gate and be like, also, I do a really fun fucking thing if you want to... Yeah. Do it, right? It's a good... Um, I feel like there's a ton of guys out there that would not be interested in being with a stand-up comic. Sure. You know, so it's a good thing right away to be like, hey, this is... Weeds them out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um... The but I've only ever done Raya. I don't. I've never done the other ones, and so. Right. That's where it's like open to like you could match with like Robert De Niro, right? <laughs> yeah. Like my age range is <laughs> hilarious. Real wide. Yeah. Getting that De Niro <laughs> dick in there. <laughs> <laughs> that De Niro dick. If that was his screen name, <laughs> that De Niro dick. T -D -D. AOL Messenger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I think I talked to you right, maybe right as it was happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you were I just about so. to launch into it. Remember, I was driving to um, uh, Portland. Remember, and I had to get off at one point because there was like, oh my god, I was gonna miss. Right. But we were talking for yes. a while. So it had already happened then. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was talk about on stage. We got divorced a week before COVID, so yeah. the timing of that is just it. It feels like extreme divorce because you go from being with somebody for eight years to not just. Now you're both living alone, but you're living alone in a time where you can't go out. You can't go be with friends. I couldn't even go be home with family because it was like you had to stay in place. That there's no like, I don't know how you ever dealt with breakups, but you know how people always like there's a breakup and then, you know, it's, then we loosely hang out a little bit after because mm -hmm. I think more often than not, people aren't willing to just like cut it off and right. go cold turkey. Right. Um, and I know I've had relationships like that where it's yeah. like, you know, uh, where then, you know, you meet up a few times, you hang. Sometimes it's, you know, blast from the past. Sometimes it's just like weird and makes you even more sad. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so this, you didn't have an opportunity for that because it was like. there. Yeah. It's this whole full quarantine. Um, but uh, we did get really lucky that we are still on such good terms and right. like want the best for each other. It's but awesome. Yeah, it's uh, that's not always the case. Uh, so you lived alone during COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Break down the first few months of that. Oh, hard. Yeah, <laughs> just so hard. It's like you are um, forced to really deal with all of your emotions because there's no like, let's go to Vegas and get fucked up, and you know, it's there's no distraction. You are just, it's a lot of time with thoughts and feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is good, which is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. I think as a person, great. As a comedian, even greater. Yeah. Just to no be like dialed in. No running from it. Yeah. That was hard too, is that I couldn't go on stage and neither could he, you know, like we couldn't go work out what we were feeling and yeah. try to turn them into jokes right then. It was like, you just had to potentially write about it, but Did yeah. you write at first? How quickly did you allow yourself to, Start did you writing. allow yourself to like take a break at first of all and go, all right. I'm going through something heavy right now, life-wise. Yeah. Everything's shut down. Let me, like, truly just be for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Again, there was kind of forced into it. Yeah. But, um... But you got your cats. <laughs> had my cats. But truly. Love my cats. Game changer. Oh, yeah. They're incredible. They really are a form of therapy. That It's so nice to have pets. Yes. Um, we had our, um... Uh, pickles, pickles during the, uh... And, and look, Love fiance pickles. is great. Love her to death. Having a pet. A, just an added something extra yes. to where it's not just you the whole time. Yes. And I know, and 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 you're probably like, oh, fuck you, you had somebody. But like, no. again, having a pet is a, it, it's just another thing to also just, I, I don't know. And I, I, it's probably why people that had babies were fired up because they yeah. had something to put their attention onto, right? Right. That wasn't the news, that wasn't, you know, jumping off the roof, that wasn't like... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you were thinking about. Right. Because well, you weren't thinking about stand-up. Yeah. Really. And I, I had friends that um, were living with their significant other during it. And some of them had a great time doing it. And others would call me and be like, oh, I am so jealous that you're living alone right now. Because wow. like I would kill to have some wow. alone time. Because it's people who were used to that 
you know, Monday through Friday the separation. And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then they were just right up on each other's laps yeah, for months was, on end. So you know people that couldn't pros and cons. figure it out, huh? People were able to figure out it eventually, yeah. but uh, it's like grass is always greener. Ho, ho, ho. It's never too early to start gift shopping for the holidays, especially because today you can save big on a gift that your family will use every day. Raycon wireless earbuds. I'll take it from here, Santa. With seamless Bluetooth pairing and comfortable noise isolating fit, you can start listening right away and keep listening for hours because the Raycon audio quality is freaking amazing. Sorry for swearing. Comparable to what you get from the other premium brands, except Raycon starts at half the price. The new Everyday Buds come with three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best with just the right amount of bass. Raycon also offers eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. There's also a built-in mic. You can take your calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. So this holiday season, get them something that they can use for calls, music, work, or play, or at home or on the go. Pick up a pair for yourself, because trust me, you're going to want to use them every day. I use them on every flight because I fly, and I want to drown out the stranger noise and listen to my favorite tunes from Cher. So go to buyraycon.com slash about today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. 20% off your Raycon order. But hurry, this offer is available only for a limited time only. You don't want to miss it. So go to buyraycon.com slash about to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash about. I'll even get a pair for the elves, those little fuckers. <laughs> don't cancel me. Hey, this holiday season, don't you want to give a gift to your loved one that makes them feel special and unique, just like the relationship that you share? That's why you're giving everyone that you care about story worth. What is story worth? Well, it's an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It is a thoughtful and meaningful gift that connects you to those who matter most, whether it's your dog, your stepmom, your stepdad, your real mom, your fake brother, a guy that looks like your sister. Every week, StoryWorth emails your relative or friend a thought-provoking question of your choice from their vast pool of possible options. Each unique prompt asks questions you've never thought to ask, like, hey, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or if you could see into the future, what would you want to find out? I've seen some crazy questions like, what's your third favorite color? What's the f- first thing you do if you got a free hot air balloon? After one year, StoryWorth will complete all your loved ones' stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. I know when I get one, I'm going to send it to all my family members so they can have a really sweet throwback memory book because, you know... You take so many photos on your phone and you just don't look at them. And you don't have meaningful conversations when you hang out. So this fuels the fire for all that shit. Reading the weekly stories helps connect you with loved ones no matter how near or far apart you are. So with StoryWorth, I'm giving you guys, the people I love most, a thoughtful personal gift from the heart and preserving your memories and stories for years to come. You want to do this? Do it. Go to StoryWorth.com slash ALN and save $10 off your first purchase. That's StoryWorth.com slash ALN to save 10 bucks on your first purchase and start mending those memories and making your family love you again. Was there something you learned about yourself that you were fired up about? Like, I don't know, that you knew all the words to a song that came on randomly. <laughs> uh, that you just, like... Because that is a... I think a quality that everyone should get good at at some point is, like, being able to be by themselves. And, For sure. And we get thrust into it in this business. Being on the road. Yeah. Just even just being... Uh, it's a very solo adventure. It is. As much as you feel that there's communal support, that you're out at clubs around people. Yeah. You're fucking... It's you. Like It's you. And then hopefully you got a couple pals that you truly feel like are your ride or dies and you can go to for stuff and mm-hmm. then but um but was there something that like happened or one day where you were like um, had an epiphany on something or just I started going on a lot of walks which cool. I know sounds so like eat pray love of me but it's walks were really important because it was the one thing that was quote unquote kind of safe during that time yes. that you could go be outside by yourself yes. and um Walking helped a ton just Whoa. to process stuff and get out of the apartment for a while. So I, I became a big walk person. I try to keep doing that. How long did you, would you walk for? Oh, I don't know. I think probably like an hour one time. Yeah, wow. maybe longer. But um, yeah, it was good. Would you write while you were walking or just kind of? I would. I would sometimes yeah. I'd get ideas. I was somebody that actually loved doing the uh, virtual shows. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, fuck them. Also and I didn't mind them. Okay. Yeah, and I, I completely respect comics that are like, I hated them, yeah. don't enjoy them. It's like, to, to each their own. And I, some of the comics, by the way, that I heard say that are people who were like, yeah, you were financially fine and didn't yes, need to do any of that right, stuff. Right, But also, 
Sorry, I cut you off. Keep going. No, no, what, what did okay. you What did you really dig about it? Oh, I just, you know, we were talking about to go through something big like uh, a divorce. Usually you would immediately start to use that on stage and, and work it out on stage. And uh, Cause because it's fresh. I, cause it's fresh. Yeah. And because I didn't have that outlet anymore, the virtual shows were like a huge godsend to me to get to even those in my living room get to do material and even say some of the new stuff out loud just or say, just yes. flex the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't understand people that were just like, Brian, did you do any? A ton. Yeah. 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 I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> you hated it. Yeah. 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 Hated it. Every single one, every single time you did it, you were like, this is taking a piece of my soul. Yeah. Except for the ones where they're like, we'll give you a thousand dollars. And you're like, what? For sure. Crazy, Found a right? couple in of my those. bed. Yeah yeah. 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 For, yeah and you're not gonna critique uh what i'm doing in my bed yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah there was yeah. one company that i stumbled upon through a friend of a friend that was like we're gonna try to do these weekly corporate shows for our whole thing mm -hmm. at a thousand a pop i did oh. two back to back and then they hired and then i don't know where they got their comics it was one of those things where i was just like can i like help you guys get some people and they're yeah. like we got it and I was like, okay. Yeah. And then the third one's about to happen. They go, hey, they shut it all down because they pulled in. They, I don't know where they, else they were getting other people because it was like I was referred by a buddy. Yeah. And this one comic was just so filthy oh, that no. the head of the whole thing just <laughs> shut it all down. Oh, no. That guy took a shit on that, everybody's bank account. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Damn. And, and, then I, and so then I even asked to reach out to him because I was yeah. like, hey, let me, <laughs> I mean, help you f f truly just make this a, sh like, that it will not be canceled, like, yeah. because this is easy money. You're helping out a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, and I try to just get in touch to be like, hey, man, don't let one, like, honestly, I don't know if you know this world, but there's a lot of people that won't do that. <laughs> like yes. that type and a lot of, of people who would love that money. And Because they told me some of the stuff he was doing, and I was like, yikes. <laughs> like, not even <laughs> not a funny, just, yeah. And a, yeah. And, oh, um, I, and I, I'm like, it's probably, again, like maybe a buddy of a buddy that was like, Maybe new, but like you got to know better than that. Yeah, I know. A corporate zoom to be just going hard in the paint. Um, we, yeah, you can't. But then there were some that were, yeah, like four people and you can't hear the laughter. Mm -hmm. But I just always try to make the best of it. I was like, I'm going to do it. Like, I just feel like I. Yeah. Right? Like, what are you going to just waste that time and not try to get something out of it? To yeah. not do that is crazy to me. Yeah, I had to push through a virtual college one where, again, the pay was great and it made it worth it. But I logged on. There were eight kids sitting in the waiting room. And I just gave a quick little shout out at the beginning like, hey, guys, would love if you could un unmute yourselves because they were all muted. Would love if you could unmute yourselves so I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself. You know, haha, <laughs> that'd be great. Also, One. I get turned on if you had a really hot voice, by the way, so we can see where that goes. Let me hear those laughs. I'm looking at you, Todd. Actually, not you, Todd. I just saw your hairline. Uh, we're going to go with you, Biff. Biff, you're in college? All right, more on that later. Unmute yourselves. More on that. Susan at the weather. Susan more on that at the later. weather. Um, you guys all have mid-40s names and you're 20. Todd, I'm like already with a receding hairline, apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I asked if they would unmute, and one kid unmuted. And I was like... Okay. What was his laugh? Strap like? in. It was a it was a girl and she laughed at maybe thirty percent of the mm. hour. So it was a full hour to one kid and just mostly silence. And but I just kept looking at the clock like twenty paycheck. more minutes till that paycheck. Get through, yeah. And you wow. just had to. But I I did virtual ones where there were eight hundred people wow. watching and got like a bunch of bookings from it and wow. all that, like crazy shit where you're i'm like i'm standing in my slippers i had no idea that this was going to create more career opportunities fuck yeah yeah made, make any friends from any of that stuff i don't know if i made friends but like um uh mark right, the, shitty question moving on mark. uh what's your second favorite color kelsey <laughs> uh <laughs> it's having a nervous breakdown over friends. there friends jesus <laughs> Uh, Did anybody say your hair looks yeah. nice that day? <laughs> <laughs> Just such a weird. I only ask because it's also such a weird, like, You've to be that isolated. Too much. <laughs> I have been to to to, uh, to be that isolated, but yeah. then to have that amount of connection with that with strangers like that in a place where like. Yeah, to, for them to then see you and then follow you and then get other bookings or like and then maybe one the p person that books you becomes yeah. a friend like who knows if that show that I got uh, you know uh, couldn't do anymore the person who was booking me was real nice like maybe 
you know, yeah. she ends up being a friend. It's uh, who knows, but right. like, I, I don't know. I'm curious. Like, I'm there are probably people that have met through those things and maybe even, you know, gotten married. Right. I don't know. I'm trying to write the the movie. <laughs> I feel like can Amy Adams and Jimmy Renner be in this? Yeah. I just think sometimes people had really shit attitudes about the virtual shows, yeah, and then would have shit sets and then feel shitty about the whole. And it's like, well, that's how you went. Into, into it, it yeah. and people can feel that energy when you're like, ugh, this. And they're like, well, we're just trying to laugh, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's so. trying to laugh. Yeah. Think of the joy you brought people during this time. Yeah. Did you ever stop to smell the roses <laughs> on that front and go, I, for me, it, it really only happens when I get a message that is like a diatribe of something that is, or just up at yes. the punchline, which um, I know you just at mm-hmm. my favorite club in the country. Seriously. And this couple came out and they, she had had a miscarriage um, and uh, about like, oh, I don't know, two, three weeks before they're supposed to have it. And oh like, my God, they, no. she was like, this was our first time out and our first time, she's like, the first time I'm, I've smiled and like she was fighting back tears oh. and the husband was just like, you know, and, and I was like, whoa. And so uh, things like that where you go, oh, yeah. man, like this is yes. not just the fun, you know, like, I yeah. don't know. You just to to, ha- to think of it in terms of more than what you think of it. Right. It takes those types of things, at least for me, to think of that. Otherwise, it's not like I get on stage being like, you're welcome for the <laughs> gift of joy, you soulless fucks. <laughs> All right. Our next comment coming to this day, you know. Oh, my God. Never. Right. It yeah. does take those interactions for you to take a step back and get out of that kind of autopilot yes. of you're just like okay i write these jokes i go on stage i do this i post about it on social media because you can get in that hamster wheel so easily and it's been so cool this is my first like real tour as a headliner cool. you know where you feel like a headliner yeah yeah let's I have, talk about that it takes a beat once you start doing it to feel like oh these are my shows i now feel like i trust myself to be like if that opener is being too dirty out of the gate, I'm going to say something to him or the club or her. Right, right. And right, just kind of take ownership of the whole. Right. Or feeling, I, I feel the weight more now of people are paying money to see me. And so it's it's our responsibility to give them their money's worth. Mm. And I feel like I'm in a place now where I feel confident that I'm doing that. But it, you know, I've been doing stand-up for 12 years now. It's taken a long time to feel like, okay, this is, I'm ready for this now. And also this year was the first time I got an agent who actually is able to book a tour cool. like this. Um, but very cool. So him Congrats. booking these, thank you. Yeah, um, you him booking these cities, some of these markets I've never been to. And so there are people coming out to the shows that have been listening to self helpless, mm-hmm. um, my podcast for like four and a half years or have been longtime standup fans. And I'm just now meeting from them for the first time. And I'm having people like crying when they meet me Whoa. or like, t- one girl, I was in D.C., one girl, like, took a Greyhound bus from North Carolina. Some dude rode his bicycle for 330 miles to see one of the shows. Like, people f- are flying. It's so crazy because okay. you don't I, – I would never think that. I would never assume that's going on. Because you're in these cities, some of them for the first time, so that's why these people are getting the chance to see you. Yeah. And you're getting an agent that's backing you mm-hmm. and getting you in good spots. Yeah. So it's a perfect mix of all the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way – 330 miles on a bike, I'm surprised you aren't married to that guy. That is fucking commitment to someone who only knows you from afar. Imagine what he would give if he was like 10 feet away from you always. But you tell me, was it a little like, were you like he, no, he the was gesture's super, appreciated, he was but super hey man, nice. you weren't wearing a helmet and that's dangerous. <laughs> no, he was super, super nice. Cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, my my dm folder i could show you some things from other people that are oh lord that's another thing i'm curious about so first of all all great stuff well deserved big congrats um rissa fury also is just crushing it and and i hope you stick with that yes uh, we just shot new episodes yeah at the moon tower at moon tower Mm -hmm. i feel like it's just it's a you've you've committed to it wholeheartedly from the get-go yeah. in like doing episodes and other things like that and have the backing of people that want to keep and it's different enough and it's funny enough that i i see either continuing to build numbers where it's at or getting plucked to go somewhere at some point thank you You probably do too that's what yeah that's the plan the hope is the plan is yeah all that and just being consistent though is a big part of it so you should yeah. feel proud that you're like not that you're continuing to churn out new stuff with it 
thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, I love doing it so much. Yeah. The days that we are shooting, I have moments every time where I'm like, I can't believe I get to do this. Yeah. This is my job. This is the coolest. And you're getting cooler and cooler guests yeah. to where it's going to be like, <clears throat> you know, you're going to get somebody that's either sees it and is like, I'm like, you know, Jeremy Renner could be a big foosball guy. And he just Great. slides into your Rye account and it's like sends a <laughs> picture of him playing foosball. And you're like, bad form, hard pass. And he's like, yikes. Uh, no, you'd be all about it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's very possible at this point, which is cool. It feels almost like the foosball version of Hot Ones a little bit, where it's it's kind of a simple format, but that is sh- Hot Wings are Sean's thing, and foosball is my thing, and I just love getting to bring people into that world. And for people that have not seen it, break it down. So, um, so my my family and I are champion foosball players, which I know sounds weird, but it's it's real. And then. Uh, I started this web series uh, through All Things Comedy. It's on YouTube. And I bring comedians on. We play three rounds. We do different things to try and make it easier for them to win. And then when they lose, um, I get to do humiliating punishments to them. So when right. Adam and Brad came on, um, they ate <laughs> milk bones. We dog, lost, by the way. Dog treats, yeah. They Everyone lost. loses because yeah. Kelsey's phenomenal. Yes. And I'm sure you've played some people that you're like, oh, you're not bad. There's no way in hell you were going to fucking be me, but you're not, you're better than the last five maybe people we had because you, I'm terrible. Like it, right? I'm pretty bad. It's all, I mean, we've done 27 episodes now, so it's a little bit of a blur on who's That's fine. skill level. But well, I was I doing it trying with to... the dwarf, so if it's that much of a blur, that is on you because I feel like only one episode featured someone. Uh, who stood on who a looked over the a- apple who box? Looked, who stood on an apple box? Who looked under the age of nine, but was over the age of thirty? This is true. <laughs> okay, this is true. I remember you trying to use a lot of um, distraction tactics. Yes, uh, a lot of <laughs> cursing my family. You, I can't remember what you said, but it was so funny. I don't remember, but you. When I send the show out to people to potentially have it get turned into a TV okay. show or whatever. Your guys' episode is, I send yours and Steve Renazisi's. No way. Mm -hmm. Because those are my two, like two absolute favorites. Where you feel like this embodies what the show is. Mm -hmm. Enough fun, Mm -hmm. enough banter. Yep. That's awesome. That makes me feel good. Because we had so much fun. You brought it. It was so fun. The energy was so great. You guys are hilarious. Your chemistry together is And you were great with us, though. And that's another piece of that that you need to highlight for people when they're watching. It's like, you're not just a talking head beating people in foosball you're keeping the conversation going you're being funny you're throwing in quick uh quips Thanks. and then okay so then at the end mm-hmm. if the comedians lose yeah. kelsey then has punishments that you can pick from one was like you know uh you know we'll have uh mike bertolina put a finger in your ass or something and then like <laughs> al magical will sneeze on you pre-covid i don't i forget i'm paraphrasing what the prizes were I'm loosely paraphrasing. Yeah, but no it was it was like eat dog bones at, or shave someone's back Okay, so your guys' it was either eat milk bones or do the sort of pyramid push ups where Brad had to do a push up while you did a push up right. on top of you. And you guys were so sweet and you knew that it was funnier to eat the dog bone. And I think you also ended up doing push ups too, but I think we did both. We did a combo <laughs> punishment. <laughs> the thing because... that was so great was the juxtaposition between your reaction to eating a milk bone and Brad's. Because you were literally dry heaving. Yeah. You were your eyes were watering. And Brad was just like a schnauzer. He just chomped. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you remember Brad had that? No problem. No problem. A treat that, you know. Dare and like, I say, let's be honest. It. If Brad's going to dress up like a household pet for Halloween, it's probably going to be schnauzer. So maybe. Or maybe I'm using he, your words. You call him a schnauzer. Did I really? Yeah. <laughs> you fucking schnauzer. Such a funny breed. That was funny. For, he yeah. was eating with no problems. And I don't know the texture, the taste. It smelled too much like a dog. Mm-hmm. Are those like not reasons dog. enough for you, Brad, to <laughs> spit a couple crumbs out? One of the ingredients is bone meal. Just a generic. Even that makes me want to puke. What bone, bone meal? <laughs> Just ground up. Do they work at Subway? <laughs> yeah. Fake bread, fake tuna. Yeah. Hashtag. Mm-hmm. But I mean, your reaction was the more common one that people have had to eating the milk bones. But I hope so. When Steve came on. I don't know why we picked this one for him, but I thought it'd be really funny to wax the letter K for Kelsey into his chest hair. Brilliant. So we did that, and boy, 
I could watch that over and over because it's to go back just and, yeah, it's great. It's a great time. All the episodes are on YouTube. Rissa Fury, type it in. Mm-hmm. Um, and you shot a bunch of killer ones. Can you say who the guests are in Austin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, Dan Soder and Big J Okerson. Great. Uh, Taylor Tomlinson and Sam Morell. Come on. So the first couple we've had on the show. Ooh. Uh, Jessica Kirsten and Josh Adam Myers. Give me a break. And then uh, Jeremiah Watkins and Trevor Wallace. Fantastic. Yeah. All hilarious, yeah. kind people that bring it, that you got uh, good rapport with. Man. So good. I'm so excited for people to see these episodes. Did you like, uh, <laughs> so going back to the road and the routine, do you mm-hmm. like, you were talking about real briefly, I should show you my DM folder. Oh. <laughs> and I'm always curious, and you strike me as someone that's just very good head on your shoulders, know how to deflect yes. the bullshit, mm-hmm. talk your way out of awkward guys coming, you know, I'm doing all these bits now about guys that I just keep seeing or hearing about with like the where guys skew being drunk and and this is probably more for non comics because i just feel like i've seen it more with non-comedian people yeah. that are think they're being funny when they're saying creepy shit but because they're drunk it's like being like did you learn anything from the burn br- i can f- didn't it help in the bathroom <laughs> like and they think that's like as the girls walk in and she's what didn't it up in the bathroom I could hold it for you. <laughs> I know you don't have one. I just need to get any. Like that type of shit where you're like, that's oh so, God, there's know. nothing positive about oh that. Oh my God. You're truly just being <laughs> someone that is own, oh. is, is just letting everyone know that I'm just here because I know the bartender. You know, otherwise there'd be no reason for you to be at that place because you're creeping everyone out. To creep someone out as they're going to the bathroom is a really tall order. And this and there's people that do it. So Because that's such a vulnerable state too. Yes. Like, to also be now you're in the bathroom and somebody's accosting you on your way. You're like, I have. If no one's in there, you're like, I now have to yeah. assess the window situation. Yeah. Can I crawl out? Yeah, it's ugh, that's a that's a really dicey time to insert yourself. Have in. you had to on the road talk yourself out of a few like my friends waiting for me? Really, I saw you walking here by yourself. <laughs> oh, I met my invisible friend. You have one too. <laughs> that's what's up. That's, that's, that's what's, what's up. up. And you're like. I have to leave, and I will punch you in the dick. Oh, freaky Kiki. And you're like, nope, my name's not Kiki, but you are freaky. This character. You know what I'm saying? I hope you are doing that. You said you're doing this on stage? Yeah, it's okay, a little bit my old roommate who used to, I used to, he used to get real hammered sure and like sleep flattered. on the stairs and like fucking pee in my closet, and I'd have to wake up and be like, hey man, that is a closet. And you go, mm, toilet. And I go, no, 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 closet. I'm teaching you, I guess, what a closet is versus a toilet. And he'd look down and go, and I go, those are clothes you just peed on, not a bowl oh, of water. Oh my God. Um, Oh but my uh, God. but yeah, he uh, he 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 used to get this thing where he would look like Al Pacino from Son of a Woman. You get so drunk, you would like look past you. <laughs> so I would let him know that he was too fucked up by just looking at him and be like, "Uh oh, hua," <laughs> and he'd go, Dad, "Fuck you, man. I'm fine." I was like, "Really? Because you look like you're gonna pee on my pants again." <laughs> um, so when you're getting these types of guys, have you had to like talk your way? out of some oh my god i um now i i always have somebody next to me like at the merch table great uh i think especially just being <clears throat> a woman on the road yep. like you gotta yep have a whole other awareness so some people sometimes will mm, maybe try to linger a little bit longer in the merch line but I, f- I don't know i also feel pretty lucky that the people who have come out to show so far on the tour seem to be like pretty genuinely awesome. okay people yeah Respectful. but again the it's sometimes it's somebody who seems really nice in person and then i'll see them in the dm and be like ah oh, okay you just know how to like hide it a little mm. and, or maybe they're you know nervous or something but it, it people are way more confident to say crazy shit in your dms yeah. than to your face um so. how do you deal with that i mean is that like yeah brian and i both are just like i can't imagine some of the shit that you're receiving and that I've even seen. I've had uh, seen gals post uh, in their stories. just like uh, Whitney, whoever else, even just friends from, from college are like, this is why I'm still single. And they post these DMs and I'm like, dude, who in their right mind thinks mm-hmm. that sending some, like, whether it's a compliment that is just way too creepy and specific. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what you're trying to gain out of that. Even, or even like in the back and forth, only a couple lines of like sincerity. And then it's just like, 
fucking super aggressive and yeah. follow you in the bathroom style. It's just interesting the way that some people will open in a DM request for where you're like, give me a few. What do you think is gonna yeah. happen from here? Yeah. Like <laughs> what a bold <laughs> square one, you know? Yeah. Um, there's a guy who's been just Relentless. really hell bent on paying me for my feet, which I mean, I turned into a bit on stage about one guy offering me two grand for a video of my feet. And at one point I finally caved and was like, this was like during the pandemic when I, you know, didn't have any comedy work. And I finally was like, all right, man, two grand for my feet. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. And then he never responded. Oh, and God. I was so humiliated. Oh, oh God. I Dagger. so humiliated oh, to have opened, like, like lowered my morals and my values <laughs> to be like, look. It's a hard time for everybody. Everybody's doing weird shit. Just it's just a ten just second video of your feet yeah. for two grand. That's that's foolish in this economy to not. You're not having someone else take it. Yeah. You're gonna take it. You're not hiring a crew. You're in control. Yeah. So you can do this oh. and to have been like, all right, okay. No, nah, I'm good. He said. And then oh. Oh, can walk into traffic. Just you feel so oh. so dumb. It's like so you had your chance. I gave you a window. Yep. I wanted mm-hmm. it then. <laughs> I moved on to hands and knuckles now, baby. <laughs> I know. I also just picture like, yeah, what what happened with that two grand? Like, did it go to somebody else? Or like, did his car have a problem? And the guy was like, it's going to be two grand to fix the transmission. And he was like, oh, there go the toes. There go the toes. <laughs> is this like, part of a joke? This is great. I haven't done that part Very on stage. Funny. But I've been thinking maybe I should and this is the answer whole- the question of like, yeah. where did... Where did that money go? That's a big part of writing, I feel like, is yeah. answer the, ask the question and answer the question. Yeah. Peel back the shit of just like, yeah. what, if that's true, then what else? I try right. to ask myself and, and, and sometimes, more often than not, feel like I, I stop before I'm like, you haven't asked all the shit. Right. This is why this bit is a minute versus five. Totally. But sometimes, I don't know how, do you, how you feel about that, but like sometimes I'm like, I like that this, you, it comes in. I get a couple whacks at it and then leave and then it. But, yeah. but there are things that mm-hmm. you're like, oh, that definitely I should spend yes. as much time as possible on and, and ring it out completely. Yeah. And this world of the, I mean, just that whole, I mean, that whole, I was so emotionally invested in you finally reasoning with yourself. Yeah. Because months had passed. Wow. I mean, he sent this to me in like October of 2019. In April 2020, I was like... The time, time is now. The time is now. Did you like see your feet in a nice light that day? Like what kind of fueled the fire to be like? <laughs> no, I think I just looked at my bank account and was like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the people what they want. I just want to feel a little bit more secure right now. 1,000%. What's happening, yeah. 2,000 for a 10 second video. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also a lot of pressure in that too of like, what do I do for 10 seconds? I mean. Wiggle my toes? Because we, yeah, we went back. I think we went back and forth a little bit of like how, what were the requirements like what did he feel was worth two grand i wish maybe i should try and find these messages i will vamp if you have them vamp vamp meaning like you'll go improvise i'll like keep i'll just talk if keep you the show try. going while you keep find the show the moving while you search oh, i don't know if i remember his oh maybe i remember his name. take okay. a beat it's worth you taking a beat for us to see the feet <laughs> We'll be right back. Hi, guys. <laughs> Are you struggling? I should have an ad ready to go. Fuck, dude. Oh that was God. all set up for a perfect. Oh, my God. Hold on now. I think I might be able to find this. Um, oh, I did get a random video from a random. What is? Oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You found it? Yes. Awesome. Oh my gosh, By the is... way, my dad is texting me th- these things now where he's like, he, he told me he's 78 and he's starting to feel like mortal. He's just starting to feel just, like, yeah, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so he'll God. text me things like, uh, "Show us tonight." Yep, and then he goes, "We'll be there with you," like in wow, spirit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And he's still like a real goof. I talk to him almost every day and make him try to make him laugh and fill the the, the spirits up. But he's starting to send shit like that where you're just like, mm-hmm. and I told it to a buddy of mine the other day, and, and as we were leaving, he goes, "Hey, I'll be with you with your shows tonight." And I go, "Fuck you, man. Fuck off, <laughs> Fuck off dude." Fuck off, Brett. <laughs> Okay. It's always Brett. <laughs> it's always Brett. You found him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I feel like this needs some sort of like setup music. Okay. Here, let me get you something real quick. You're going to read just the exchanges or? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you the timeline of, of what happened. Great. Give me one second. Actually, go ahead. Okay. So um, September 2018, he sends me a message replying to one of my stories that have my feet in it with my cat. He says, nice feet. Then a month later, there's me 
with fuzzy socks that are covered in cat hair, like as a joke in my stories. Take them off and I'll buy your album. Just such a weird, it's like, what? <laughs> Take off your socks? And I'll buy your album. <laughs> His negotiation <laughs> tactics are very suspect. <laughs> what? Uh, and then four days later, he really ramps up and just says, two grand for feet vid. Which it's like, you went from that you'd buy my album, which costs perhaps nine ninety nine, to just two grand for foot vid. Then also, where did he? Does he already love feet, or did he see a picture that was showing more feet than you normally do? I think I he think just think loves he, feet. He just did foot guy, yeah. Um, then he, re I put a picture of my dad in my stories, like promoting an article he was in, and he responded to that. How Two much grand for, those for feet? private foot vid? I'm like, I ain't responding. This is my dad's <laughs> in. This is just like a really weird time. Yeah. Read the room, man. Yeah. Um, and then. April 2020, still pay. Oh, okay. So he did follow up with me about this. April 2020, still pay two grand for feet. May 2020, okay, you make videos. I'm willing to, to, to do two grand for feet. So then five days later, I say, my Venmo is this. If you send me two grand, I'll send you a 20 second video of my feet. This is where I cave. July, two months later, deal. But how do I know you won't scam? I don't know two months fucking steve who take like jesus christ how, you're the scam and i said when i send the video you'll be able to see that they're the same feet as in the video slash photos on my wiki feet does that work for you oh my god he says yes but it has to be exclusively for me i want a 30 second vid of your feet i've done this for others i said that works <laughs> do you prefer paypal or venmo he says venmo and I said, okay, I'm at this. Once you send the two grand, I can send you a 30 second video by either tomorrow or Monday. And then he never sent me the money. But you sent him the video? No. Oh. No, no, oh, no. Money no. first. Okay, that's right. Yeah, money. Brad. I mean, I almost called you Brad. I was <laughs> yeah, thinking about yeah. uh, Brad Williams. That, money first, always. That is, that is insane. That's also, he even upped it to 30 seconds and you were like, you know, fuck it, we're here. We're here. I'm at, once I my caved. mind was open enough to doing it, I was like, what's another 10 seconds? Again, what am I, am I doing like little interpretive dance? What do you do with Are your you feet Are you dancing? Is it just, seconds? does he want yeah. you to like cut it up? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Does he want you to pour know. something on him? I, Wiggle oh, them, act like do a little play. Like, are you supposed to like put a sock puppet on and. Yeah, right. Your, like. I know. I don't. Like have try you to seen... suck on one of them and you're like, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, I've heard yeah. that where people were like, I want to see you suck your foot. Like, uh, are you on wiki defense, feet? I wrote that too. What's I that? am on wiki feet. You are. What is that? <laughs> so this is how this whole bit of mine starts on stage now. Is I Great ask question. People, what is that? I ask people if they know what wiki feet is. So it's a website for people with foot fetishes. So they go onto some women's Instagrams. They find photos that show your feet and then they compile them on wiki feet so they can like jerk off more efficiently. Dear God. You know. So how many people's lunch breaks are only so long. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to you got to make the most you of those. You got to make the most of your days at Target. 30 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't have time. <laughs> imagine I just what is going on in the brain of someone who sees a foot and no judgment. Right. Because <laughs> I subscribe to like if it ain't hurting nobody and it's I mean look, it's hurting your friendships if that info gets out. <laughs> I look yeah, I'm not trying to kink shame anybody. Yeah. You do you. Totally. Totally. I, look, I was willing to su financially support this kink. <laughs> well, well no. that's I was willing to get financially supported, yeah. and I was willing to provide but here's, jerk material. Here's where I get curious. Like, what if he was like, draw, like, make your, like, make your toes look like wieners with, like, a Sharpie? <laughs> you wow, know what I'm saying? Your brain? <laughs> I would have never even thought that. Yeah. Um, maybe, Who knows? Yeah. maybe I'm on wiki feet. Uh, no, but you know what I'm saying? Like what yeah. would have been the threshold for his creative suggestions oh. where you're like, okay, man. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds is already 10 more seconds than we <gasps> right. decided on. And now you're asking me to like put on a, a, you know, a show here. I, I think I would have had a hard time doing any, like I, I knew what he was going to use that for. And that was already kind of weird for me to know that that would be used for coming. Yeah. yeah. Again, it was a dark year, okay? People were going no through identity. I wouldn't be judging you crisis. now if you yeah. told me you were going to be late because you, the guy wanted 45 seconds instead of 12. 
Yeah, but if if he had asked me to do something really sexual with my feet, I think it yeah. would have been too weird for me. But if he was going to give me full creative freedom and just however I interpreted 30 seconds. Yeah. Two grand is a lot of money for 30 seconds. Interpretation is a big deal. Like Domino's used to have the slogan, you got 30 minutes. And I was always like, does that mean like you got 30 minutes to pick it up outside your door and then we take it back and fucking eat it in front of your ex? (laughs) Or is it like you got 30 minutes? I'm serious. Like you got 30 minutes and then we'll be there. Right. Very open ended. And I'm like kind of brilliant where they're just kind of like, I don't know what we mean. I guess just fucking answer the door when we're fucking there. You know? (laughs) Also, Domino's fuckboy. Domino's <laughs> fuckboy. Great Xbox Live handle. <laughs> oh my god, it 100% exists. Also, there. seeing those commercial of Domino's when they had like the guy that was like the expert, Pete, the box maker, that didn't give me any sort of comfort in knowing how that pizza's made. I was oh. just like, if this guy's making these, they were like, he makes a thousand boxes a minute. And, you know, it's still single, ladies. You're like, really? And then, um,. <laughs> No, no shame. The guy was crushing it, but yeah. he looked like he needed help. And so, <laughs> but then, but then you're like, I don't know, man. Like it's already, you're, it's already getting made very quickly. All that food is it's, like anything that's not yeah. a place that looks like they're taking their time. And even those places probably like, you know, might have a, a routine that's, you know, that lobster mac and cheese might've just been heated up. You don't fucking know. Yeah. The rate at which it's made is concerning at best yeah. it's like yeah you want it fast but you also want to feel like it wasn't just pulled out from under somebody's car seat oh yeah that's been there for oh yeah <laughs> pulled out of a car seat <laughs> oh my morning. god yeah they're like they're running low on fries everyone go out to their cars <laughs> scrape up the back seat for leftover fries that have fallen in between the seat belts is it is it okay if there's left if there's some of the seat belt on? is it okay? oh okay? of course it is cameron it's fine we just need fries so we can serve seat belt fries Well, we're not going to advertise that. (laughs) Are you tired of letting sports talk radio and the people who think they know about sports influence your betting choices? Me too. So don't miss the biggest sports headlines from the night before. But if you did, ever wonder how that might impact this week's bets? Relive the best in sports from the night before with BetMGM Tonight. Presented by BetMGM. Look, the show rules because the live aspect of the show really affects your bet making in a positive way. You feel better informed, more confident when you're placing your bets, and the fun factor is there because the show is entertaining, and that's what you want it to be. BetMGM is a high-energy live destination for casual and hardcore sports fans alike. It's engaging, polarizing. You can get caught up in sports betting and the whole world of it with a heavy dose of entertainment, which is the way anything should be. Host Quentin Mayo of NBC Sports Washington and Ryan Horvat of 12.50 a.m. The fan and Trista Crick are joined by on-site correspondents to bring you insider information in real time so you can make the appropriate move when you need to with your hard-earned cash. Every detail matters when making bets. BetMGM Tonight dives deeper to help give you the edge. It's fun to bet on the game, but it's even more fun when you've got the inside scoop. So tune in to BetMGM Tonight, presented by BetMGM. Listen on Audacity, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Hey, you. Me? Yeah, you. You look like you're busy. Yeah, I'm sitting here on the bench playing with my feet. Well, dude, since you're a busy guy, maybe stop thinking about what you're going to wear and just embrace the radically efficient Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. What's that? Shut up, man, and I'll tell you. The Daily Wear System is a selection of clothes rooted in smart design, made with performance fabrics, and built to work together. From breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear, my fave, and beyond Mack Weldon makes it easy for you to dress for work, leisure, and play, or wherever your summer takes you. The underwear at Mack Weldon is truly my fave. Usually I'm commando, but I want a little bit of Mack W on me, so I rock their underwear. It's been uh, pretty easy to roll out of bed, knowing that I'm going to strap up with Mack Weldon, because their clothes are designed to work together with you and make sure they fit your body appropriately. For the ultimate lazy Sunday, can we recommend their Ace Sweatshorts, which have modern tailoring and pair perfectly with their ultra-soft, ultra-upgraded Pima Tees. Oh yeah, baby. For weekend travels both near and far, their silver knit polos and radius shorts are the perfect high-tech, highly packable combo. All this comfy-ass shit can be yours, so buy some time for yourself this summer and start rocking the Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. Be comfier, look better. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash about and enter promo code about. That's MacWeldon.com slash about. Promo code about for 20% off. Do it. You have to go check out WikiFeet because it's just funny. 
Yeah, I'm down for, I'm down for the uh, the humor aspect of that stuff. They but rate, I don't want to be on it too long. Feet. Could and I put my feet on there? I don't know that you. I don't really know how it works on getting the profile. I, I just know that somebody had made one of me, and then somebody had told me, "Hey, did you know you're on WikiFeet?" And I went and looked, and that's also when I learned um, that they rate your feet, which is upsetting yeah. because I am. I've been rated OK feet. <laughs> it's literally just the letters OK. Oh, I just so pulled I it just, up. You saw it? Yeah. So Wait, I no. say on stage that I have um, I have Applebee's feet. It's like, <laughs> you'll put it in your mouth, but you won't tell anybody about it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks. Applebee's feet. Yeah, they're not 24-hour oh. feet. No, they're just You can't they're eat okay. there at 2 a.m. No, they're yeah, okay. There's a cutoff. Yeah. There's better and there's worse things to put in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a place like that that you feel comfy in if you're like in Cedar Rapids or Des Moines or <laughs> Omaha where you're like, here's my franchise where I feel like y- you hear the che- Cheers theme song as you walk in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you feel like you go, I don't know, the bar layout, the TV. Like, is there a place like that that you have or a coffee shop that maybe oh. is just authentic that makes <laughs> you feel safe? That's a good question. I love a, a Target. I mean, I know that's a real basic bitch thing to say, but if you see a Target on the road, you're just like, you know it's going to be pretty clean. Yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. organized. You just can go kill a lot of time. Totally. It's a comfort zone. You got everything you need there. Yeah. I mean, truly. Yeah. Um, Have you... Uh, what was the first thing that you... When you started to kind of get in this nice flow mm-hmm. um, and... Uh, and just have consistent income. Mm-hmm. Did you treat yourself to some sort of like congratulatory like, you know what? I, I'm like making, uh, I'm starting to kind of get into a nice pocket. And yeah. I'm taking things up a notch. It's been a good year. I got out of a bad year. I'm making it a good year. Yeah. I'm going to treat myself. Yeah. I um, I finally bought nice furniture. I don't know if this is a comic mindset or what it is, but I've always bought basically like the... Uh, dorm room Mm -hmm. furniture from target even in my 30s yeah because it's you just have this yeah yeah enough it's just enough yeah it's the same way yeah for a while i think comics start to feel like well i don't know when the next paycheck's coming and so i don't want to splurge and uh it, it does feel so nice now to be like you know what no i'm gonna get the nice couch and stop buying disposable furniture basically things that last for this very short period of time and i have to buy another one anyway so i'd rather just get something nice that lasts that came with stains yes it's like you could you don't have to stay at the ritz but (laughs) holiday and express versus la quinta hey do you like pee already in the toilet (laughs) or do you like to be the first one that flushed yeah. Right? Do you want somebody to treat your mouth as a toilet? Because, <laughs> listen, <laughs> looking to You're looking to in. Every mouth is a toilet. Uh, what voice is that? Um, don't cancel me. Um, no, I think that there is, uh, there is definitely something to be said about, like, investing in yourself in that regard. because yeah. And making your home as comfy as you can make it within reason. Sure. But also, like... Picking and choosing. A couch is a, to me, the thing to go all in on. Yeah. Because, I don't know, dude. You um, you want to feel like you can take a nap there. You can crash. You can be comfy. You can have those nights where you do let yourself take a, yeah. a break from the grind. Yeah. And a couch is a great spot to do that. Yeah. It's hard to. I sound to... like the guy who invented the couch. <laughs> Listen. Hi. I'm Carrie Couch. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Jesus Christ. I was trying to sell couches to you. Yeah. I just saw my future. I'll be honest. I just saw my future. It, it was if the next 10 already. sets don't go according to plan, mom, I'm moving back home and selling selling couches. And I'm a dog like this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a bummer. It's um, so true, though. What it did is. you, what in the couch that you got really separate it from the rest of the pack? Um, it just was expensive. It was an expensive couch. And I, you know, I've got two cats and that's usually just a bad decision to get nice furniture because mm. they treat it. They have no respect. Yeah. For what do the your... couch do to the cat that the cats got so much animosity? <laughs> they have no boundaries. They just don't give a fuck. And so I'm going to have to figure out strategic ways to keep them from. Wrap it up, right? Yeah. Put that put plastic little, wrap. Mm-hmm, or put the little like a throw blanket on the back so they don't want to go into it. But um, recliner. Yeah cup holders like did you get any sort of extra features or just a I got comfy... like the, the extra large size great 
which again, it's that uh, this is Feels a new good. thing for me. I yeah. would usually just be like, okay, just get the for you. cheapest one. And I was like, you know what? No, I deserve it. I'm doing it. I deserve the XL couch. <laughs> Who said that? Is. Kelsey Cook. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Please let that be what I'm known for. That is amazing. Um, do you have a uh, <laughs> Do you have a routine on the road? Like, do you have like Do you write when you're saying I like to try a few new things? Yeah. Is um, when you get to a city, are you like I'm gonna go out today, or do you like catch up on sleep and just stay in and watch some bullshit and then just kind of you know maybe do a little workout and then go to the shows? Like, what's do you have? Depends. You, yeah. I'm trying to be better about working out on the road. Um, I'm. Ugh. I'm always so tired. I don't know if you feel this way yes. with us living on the West Coast and doing those East Coast shows. Yes. That time zone change, it really fucks you. Yep. And so. I'm worthless the next day. I'm so worthless. You know what one of my um, treat yourself purchases was? I got nice Sony headphones. I had still been using. This is how cheap I had been with myself all these years. I was still using the, with the cord, Apple, the free Apple iPhones. Not even the AirPods. Yeah. Just still using those. No Fine. noise cancellation. But for somebody who travels every week, people were like. You're not using anything that has noise cancellation because I would oh, just sit yeah. through six hour flights with screaming c- children. Dear God. Yeah. Yeah, that's an upgrade worth upgrading to. Oh, it's the best money I've ever spent. Yep. And now songs that I've heard a million times sound brand new. Incredible. I'm like, oh Whoa, my God, just yeah. ears coming. It's so exciting. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Also, you want to drown out that ambient noise. Like, I've had, yeah. I've been on planes where people are listening or watching porn with no headphones. No. Babies. No. Um, flight attendants gossiping, which I take the headphones off for that because <laughs> that's Sorry, exciting yeah. always. Um, but yeah, there's just, uh, I mean, have you had any anti maskers on planes yet that have like, halted or I had a woman sitting next to me who had a really bad cough and was taking her mask off to cough what the fuck and then took a nap (laughs) but I mean (laughs) you don't want to cough yeah I mean it's probably smelled awful yeah it is the reason and then took a nap with her mask yeah down dangling just off and the flight attendant did at one point come and be like you have to put it back on good but i wish i i'm such a people pleaser i'm so non-confrontational it i wish i had it in me to have turned to her and been like hey can you put your mask on yeah but i don't like then you have to sit next to that person for another five hours and i can't i've never been that person to go out of my way to be like the citizen's arrest like people that have told me like when i've been on like my phone a last minute text as the plane's getting ready to take off yeah <gasps> have people done that to you oh yeah oh no it's, way it's the closest i've come to smacking an old woman <laughs> yeah joke obviously but but like yeah the like <clears throat> and you're like yeah i'm just real quick text and then <clears throat> and then i got tattled on once no way sitting next to the gal and i literally said i was like do you work for the airline she goes no but you need to follow the rules i go <gasps> it's my choice oh <sighs> And I literally was finishing it up and like it was kind of an important thing. And I thought about doubling down and being like, my sister's in a coma right now. <laughs> and that was the last thing I was going to get to say to her. Oh my and God, I wish you would have. you just made me get off the phone with her. I so, wish you would have. Wait, feel, she's in a coma, but you're on the phone with her? I was texting with her <laughs> through the coma. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Were you eavesdropping on our conversation? I thought coach passengers couldn't talk to first class passengers. <laughs> Through the curtain. Through the curtain. Close Sorry, the curtain, what sir. Did you say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh they do whip God. that curtain yeah. shut sometimes. Yeah. Like it's like, don't even look at the people up there. Don't even smell their fucking cookies and chips. Their <laughs> <laughs> cookies and chips. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's I'm the travel is the the exhausting part of yeah what we do. So it's crazy. you got to treat yourself. Yeah. Um, your merch, you crush it with your merch. Thank you. People should know that they can go get your merch. They know once they go to the show. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember when I first start, you s- saw you start to like coin certain phrases and, and put stuff out there. I was like, oh, uh, she's got that part of her brain working, which is awesome. Nice. Because it seems like you clean house with some of this shit. Thanks. It does really help on the road financially if yeah. you've got something that people want. Um, you started with what? Oh, God. I used to do air fresheners. Yes, that's right. And then I used to do, I was doing t shirts and air fresheners early on, and now I just do t shirts. Um, but I had, so the tour I'm on is called the Hustler Tour, and I had shirts made, and I posted about this on Instagram. But the shirt company, I sent them the list of cities, and then they kind of took liberty on adding the states. Cool. 
And when I opened the box, I'd bought 100 shirts and they wrote Oklahoma City, Ohio on the back of. Okay. It's one of those like air vintage. Yeah. Where was the, where, what city made the shirts? What city made the shirts? Oh, LA. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, I, I posted about it on Instagram just to kind of joke about it. Yeah. Because uh, it is the only city on the entire tour where the name of the state is in the right. city. And that's the one that they. Dear God. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a like Kansas City, you know what I mean? Yeah. That'd oh, be yeah. an easy one. Oh, I know. I've been sitting yeah. on stage like, can't wait to perform in New York City, Texas. Like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? How did you mess this up? But it, now people want that shirt that much more because they're like, oh, it's like a collector's That's thing almost- or whatever. So <laughs> now we're just like keeping it. But people, yeah, people love it. Uh, the air fresheners came from what? Oh, I used to do a joke about like that it was like baloney balls i mean it was so yeah i'm touring with jim norton you know that's a very specific audience audience <laughs> did you feel like and you had to filth it up that i didn't feel like i like had to filth it up i feel like my you could like walk into half of my set i think on the road and be like oh this is completely clean mm-hmm. and then you could walk into another half and be like wow yeah. that's that's definitely dirty yeah um I like Where does baloney balls fall because to me I feel like you could say that on the Tonight Show. Oh God, you can't say anything on the Tonight Show. I know. Don't so... tell that to Michael Cox. <laughs> By the way, I've sent Michael Cox like five different sets, and he's sent back just the most. I'll just say they were emails. Mike, I love you, but uh, uh, yep. But and one was on me for sure, where I definitely emailed him like he was like no brands, no. He'd see me at a set out here mm-hmm. and was like. Dude, I think like, you know, I just hadn't seen you in a minute, but blah, blah, blah. And I was like, fuck yeah. And I was like, dude, I would be an honor to try to get on there, you know? Yeah. And I sent him a, he's like, no brands, no this, no that. And I mean, the set included like, you know, <laughs> sexual references, oh, God. brands and like five of the jokes. And I just like completely oh, misread no. it. And just and so it was almost, he was just like, I'm a, he's like, I'm ashamed for you that you sent this. Oh, <laughs> And I was, and then I tried to make a joke out of it, and then it just that was not it. But then I've seen him around since, and it's like I think fake cordial, but also, or maybe real cordial with the undertone of like, you're never doing the Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just kind of like said to myself, maybe I don't have anything worthy of, of that. But um, but you've done it, and mm-hmm. so you've made that work, and then you have. So that's why I ask, where's Baloney Ball fall, uh, fall? I mean, you definitely couldn't say it on this Tonight Show. You but couldn't. It's, oh, because you can't no. say balls. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't be sexual like at all. I know. I had to. I mean, I, I got away with saying condom on the Tonight Show, but even that, I had to they be beat it out. No, I couldn't say bitch on the Tonight Show. It's Jimmy. like really, like Jimmy. really, 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 really clean. Um, yeah. but I wanted to be. <laughs> I like being able to be clean if I need to. Yeah. Um, but I like I. I just like being able to joke about whatever yes. I want to joke about. Um, so, yeah, touring the with Jim. Freshener. Oh, the yeah. gym. Oh, sorry, Jim. Yeah, and the air fresheners and all that. That was so fun because his crowds are like the least PC people left on the planet. There was nothing you could say that would make people get tight butthole mm-hmm. over anything. And it was the same, no matter what city we were in, it was the same group of fans, essentially, Drama. just in different cities. Yeah. And so it was so much fun. I mean, I loved performing for his people. Did you, uh, have they come over to the uh the cake yeah, cook. i i joke about i have a joke about jim now on stage and so i'll say at the beginning like anybody here jim norton fan and you know people cheer so that's nice that some people came over from that but fuck yeah 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 you've it been doing took, oh, oh, go ahead i was gonna say i toured with him for three years and i feel like toward the i don't know maybe halfway through is when his crowd started to warm up to me a little bit but in the beginning i felt like you know kenny his manager would do voice of god from the side of the stage and i would always go out cold and so he would the way he would do the announcement be like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Norton," and this theater would go ah, and then he'd go, "But first, and you just <laughs> collectively oh, fuck." <laughs> but oh. first, someone we know you'll probably, definitely, maybe enjoy. <laughs> She's got ten seconds of foot coverage, but if you sweet talk her, she'll give you twenty. I mean, just not even trying to set you up for victory, right? And you could just like. And then I would walk out and I used to, I think during that tour, I would try to make myself look a little dressier mm. because it's like theaters. You don't want to look like, yeah. you know, and 
I just could feel people being like, well, this looks like a great time to take a shit. Like, <laughs> let me go. I bet his audience shits a lot, too. I bet but they do shit a lot. Yeah, great. But like, I'm going to take a dump. So, Call, but- text me when this shit is on the stage. <laughs> Wait, so there had to have been a point, though, or a show where you felt like, oh, the, I think I got him. Like, I, I'm, I'm... Yeah, I started doing his um, radio show more, and just he would post about me on his social yeah. media, and I think it just... I got more comfortable with right. his crowd, but it, you know. So it's been 12 years. I think I saw you post a picture recently of like your early days. You were like, <laughs> I look like a Florida. I thought I look like I uh, am going on a girl's trip to Fort Lauderdale. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Someone... was such a throw. That was a great throwback. <laughs> Thank you. You were performing in so sandals, crazy. I think you said. Oh my God. Like <laughs> wedges in shorts. In shorts. Who yeah, does that? Horrible. Somebody was like, uh, what was it like to get pregnant on a pontoon boat? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I was like, God, that's so accurate. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that um, – do you hearken back to those days often? Like, do you ever get flashbacks of, of sweated out gigs or just go to a certain city where you've maybe had, you know, uh, the nice reflective like, oh, man, I'm back here as a headliner. Like, I remember coming to this place and doing that fucking in front of that <laughs> stoop. Like, you know. Right. Well, performing in Spokane now is so fun. I mean, that's my yeah, hometown. Yeah. I didn't – perform there that much growing up because they didn't have a ton of places to perform but it is a good feeling to be like oh god i i used to perform like 30 minutes from here in such sketchy bars in idaho yeah and now uh, you're packing out the hometown club yeah it's nice that's extra cool yeah. have you had some people come out of the woodworks in the last uh, couple years uh teachers oh, boyfriends so many friends teachers. it's shocking like in the merch line there have been some shows where there's like four different elementary school teachers of mine at one show what? and i'm like oh my god i haven't seen you since i was nine that's and you just heard me up. talk about cum like yeah. <laughs> god that's again. it yeah. Zero, again again <laughs> doing a but lot funnier of nine. since yeah. i was nine yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least the bits worked out i didn't just scream cum halfway through the class yeah you know what's weird i was just thinking about this the other day hmm. uh, you know how there's uh, the superlatives where like you get voted most whatever yeah yeah in seventh grade i got voted most likely to be a sex ed teacher in seventh grade, I'm like, who even made that a category for seventh graders? Yes, Isn't that that's creepy? That's the first question yeah, for sure. And then what was I saying to people that they were like, you know. she likes talking about dicks? You, know. you were like, you know, if you, if you close your eyes and those feet can turn into wiener. I don't know. You, you said something. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> couldn't believe it. Yeah. What did you, you, nothing's coming back to your mind of why you would have no, gotten that label? I, I hadn't had sex then. I didn't Sex know. ed teacher, yeah. That's a weird Were you one. personable? Like maybe there was a yeah. I guess. Could you like? But... I don't know. Break things down that not everyone knew. I don't know. Were you putting condoms on bananas? Were you putting lunch condoms time? on bananas at lunch for a goof? I yeah. truly don't know. Who was the sex ed teacher? I'm trying to think that we had Mrs. Romney. I feel like who also taught home ec. I do remember laughing in the fifth grade a lot, and I was just talking about this on stage with like the first video I saw in sex ed. Oh, okay. Do you remember that? It was like... Yeah. Like the... Very old school. Yeah. Yeah. It was like black and white. It was almost a silhouette. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember this vividly because I, my buddy Evan Hatch and I would just giggle our way through this class. And yeah. then there was like a nighttime course that fathers and sons would go to. Yeah. And... Um, which who knows what I missed out on of that. I don't know <laughs> oh my, my dad God, definitely didn't go course. with me for that. So I went with like my friend's dad because my mom was like, I can't go. It's just like good for the boys. And I was like, yeah, it's probably for the best. I don't want you having to you know describe any of this to me yeah but also like your friend's dad too like recapping on the oh way home God. so you guys know what a you know what a clit is right and you're like, eh, I think we passed my house mr larson um yeah we're just circling around you can name all seven labias Jake. i think there's just two like, were you listening have you had sex oh my you have God. have you my, had sex you have my best friend you yeah. made him but uh i'm thinking he's adopted now but but there was um there was a video. It was black and white, and there was like a a, uh, a woman showering, yeah. <laughs> and then a guy walks in, yeah, and behind her, like in this, uh, um, you know, in the silhouette video, and I don't remember what was said prior to the video, like you know, and this is, you know, <laughs> um, anal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess right. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a real quick class today. Um, we're just gonna this cover is the why basics. I was to be sex yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cut right to the heavy chest. petting. Okay, over the pants. HJ's hand job, hand job. That's right, Billy. And um, but over the pants. So it's got to do a little bit more work. Both people do. But so 
And then anal. We're going to hit anal. Just going to be number three today. Usually it's number 18, but, you know, mommy got a, mommy got a date. <laughs> um, oh no, God. so then the silhouette of the guy and then, or the woman, and then the guy comes up behind, and the silhouette of the woman goes. <laughs> Were they just oh showing you psycho? Yeah, what the it's black fuck? and white. Did a, the woman was startled, and I remember being like, uh, hey, are we ever going to see consensual shower yeah, sex in the fifth the grade? Fuck? Like, like, and then the guy turned around and then they started like, I, it was just very weird. Yeah. And then like the video, you know, ended shortly after that. And I was like, I think they're going to like, this is like, like, but also devil's advocate. I don't even know what you start with. Like jokingly anal, but maybe it is just go right in and be like, look, there's other ways to do it. <laughs> that don't send you to hell. That don't send, don't you, send to you to hell. hell. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. Most likely to be a sex ed teacher. Yeah. No. What time is it, by the way? Six twenty. Six twenty one. I got it. Probably go. Good. Let's wrap this up. Um, yeah, I, I think we're about at an hour, right? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, I had these like fun little news stories I wanted to like throw at you, but um, we'll save that for the next time. Um, I can but, just text my. Fr- no, no, no. That. We're, Dinner res, but I could text them. No, no we'll be good. We'll, okay. Another five, cool? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's special on Epics, right? Mm-hmm. People can go find that on Epics. On Epics, Great. yes. Um, congrats on that. Thank you. It looked incredible. Um, Thanks. Uh, okay. So we close this out with a um, with a Inside the Actor Studio. R.I.P. James Lipton. You would have no doubt been on the show at some point. So oh, because you. of That's that, nice. we're going to have a 10-question, uh, get-to-know-you questionnaire from the way Lipton closed out the show with Kelsey Cook, uh, Cook to get uh, Kelsey um, to get to know Kelsey a little bit more. Here we go, <clears throat> Kelsey. What is your favorite word? Oh, so weird. My mind just thought moist, but it's definitely not. But mm. if I'm, am I supposed to just do rapid fire answer? No, no, no. You can take your time. Mm, favorite word. And question two will be least favorite, so you can save moist for that. Favorite word. Hmm. Mm. I like, uh, I was just, now I'm just thinking shaft. I think the sex ed thing just really word. took yeah, my brain really. down. <laughs> Only sexual terms. Shaft is a good word. I like shaft. Shaft just feels right in your mouth. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> good night, I'm going to go. Well, that's it. We're ending on that. What is your, what is your least favorite word? Moist? I don't like moist. Yeah. Yeah. It's just even. No, that's, nobody likes moist. Oh, there's well, people that like moist. People the like guy the feeling of moist, but as for the likes... video of your feet, probably loves the word moist. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Give me that moist toe. You're like Ugh. Morse Just code. Damp. No, no, moist toe. Pruny. <laughs> Pruny. Oh, another word I'm Prunies. not a fan of. Mm-mm. Yeah. My uh, mom was friends with a woman whose sister's name was Prinny. Oh, that's unfortunate. And we'll be back next week with more facts about Adam's life that <laughs> nobody fucking gives a shit about. Uh, what turns you on? It could be sexual or not. Mm. My number one turn on is uh, funny, which is like no shock because that's my yeah life. But and somebody you can vibe with, right? Mm-hmm. Like somebody who can make me laugh, make like you me. laugh. You don't number have one. yeah, but also who I make laugh. Right. Also important. Both of them. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've had that both ways too, where it's like you're like, oh, I just this person's just a yet like. Making me feel like I'm God's gift to the world comedically, mm-hmm. but like then after a while you're like, no, I want to fucking. You need both. I want to be surprised, but you know, like yeah, have mm-hmm. a couple zingers even maybe like twice a month. Say twice something a month. Silly. Wow, that's a low bar. Yeah, well, this was sixth grade, <laughs> and I've shattered her out on the pod a couple weeks ago. Oh my, my sixth gosh. grade girlfriend. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wasn't bringing a lot to the table comedically. Yeah. Um, what turns you off? Um, people who are, people who, um, are sh- like shitty to wait staff. Oof. Yeah. Or just, uh, That's telling. That's indicative of who you are. Yeah. Or like really arrogant. Um. But people who don't say thank you when you hold the door for them. Oh, my bit. <sighs> Takes can't. you two seconds. LA is so bad. <sighs> and I'm from, I'm from Spokane where like everybody's so nice and wholesome and I just didn't even realize that people don't do that yeah, here I, know. I hate it or people who don't return their shopping carts can't stand that shit yeah and as a former bag boy of Albertsons I can tell you going to gather the carts mm-hmm. or cart bitch whatever you were called yeah dick face 
getting specific. That's fucking. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just go down a whole rabbit hole of nicknames from the '90s. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a big one. Yeah, and it also says a lot about who you are. Yeah, the people that just like leave it and like or see the kid and like push it at him or leave it. you can get that right. Yeah, You're like oof. Oof. Like entitle, entitlement, yeah. people who are just mean. I just, yeah. I don't know. Entitlement. That's a, that's a, mm-hmm. that's a big turnoff. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Fuck. What sound or noise do you love? Uh, when a foosball goes in a goal hard, or when you uh, hit a three pointer. Yeah, we didn't even talk hoops. I know. We, we got. Have and we to. will talk about this. At, we. We need to organize. Three point challenge. I saw a video uh, not too long ago of you um, uh, just, you know, fucking splashing Thanks. the net uh, uh, in basketball. I sound like the guy <laughs> my mom dated briefly who had like did, couldn't play basketball and was like would come out when I was shooting hoops and be like, "Hey, you mind if I throw up some basket shots with you?" I was like, "Yeah, if you fucking can describe the sport better." And then you he would shoot and are. then he would shoot underhand. And I remember telling my mom I was like, "I don't know much about this guy, but he shot underhand and he called it basket shots and I feel like this is very telling of what's going to happen to you in the bedroom." He does not belong and this here. This seems like two big red flags. <laughs> He can't even describe basketball. Basket shots? Oh, Mind if I threw it under hand like I'm 90? God. But I'm 40 and oh I'm fucking your God. mom. I think we'll see how tonight goes. He tries to finger by like going like behind your back and like under the leg. And you're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you're just making sure your butthole's there and coming back. Around. I like to do the roundabout. Nope, that's not a move, man. Just go, yikes. <laughs> He's like a let me just get up and it's called the up and under roundabout. Yeah. The ventriloquist. The ventriloquist. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, okay. So basketball. Yeah. But you are a hooper. And we're going to put nice. together a comedian's three-point shootout. I, and I can't that. wait. Um, but, yeah, you got a sweet shot. That was awesome to see. Thanks. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, no. I'm sorry. What sound or noise do you hate? What sound or noise do you hate? Um, kids screaming. Yeah, just because it's all I hear on planes every week. Easy, and that sucks. Control yeah. your kids. Well, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, ooh, I would have loved to. I mean, I love, I love so much shit. I, if I had been able to pursue a sport uh-huh. competitively, that would be really cool. I also love makeup, which is like completely one eighty, mm-hmm. but. Anything like that. Okay. Could you be one of those gals like in the, like Nordstrom, like the makeup gals? I would love to be like a, a celebrity makeup artist. Whoa. Really? Fun. Yeah. In another life. That would have been cool. Like, a go- like somebody's go-to, you know? Yeah. Like their right hand person. Whose go-to would you want to be? J-Lo. I knew it. <laughs> That'd be so fun. J-Lo. She rules. What profession would you not like to do? Um, porn star. Yeah, that sounds so exciting. Bad hours. It's <laughs> <laughs> my number one qualm. Bad hours. Ten to eight. I mean, you miss all the good shows. Yeah. Bad hours and just the things that happen to your holes. It just feels like they don't ever go back. I like that audio. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, some of the truest shit I've ever heard about the porn industry. Yeah, it doesn't go back. Also, I feel like you just take you've taken all the fun out of it. No. Yeah, you've taken the joy in life and made it your work. Yeah, I mean, isn't also, that what a comedian does as well? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks, Bri, for Sorry. that dose of reality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you're not teaching a sex ed class tonight. Yeah. A little too raw and honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I just feel like it's, I mean, look, I've seen one porn getting made. It was with Brad. I was on my way to a Seder. Brad Williams knows all the porn stars. And oh we uh, we were on our way to a Seder. I think I've told the story before. And uh, I was on my way to a Seder about 10 minutes away in Van Nuys. And uh, went to this little, like, looked like a strip mall. And we just knocked on one of these random doors. It was like in a row of doors. Guy opens his the thing with his boxers just scratching his nuts. I was like, well, right on cue. And then we go in there. I immediately hear some girl complaining about 
like you gotta ask the guy to like, wear a condom because like I'm fucking eating so much, and I'm just like. You good? You need anything? I was gonna go get some. There's the guy said we can go to the concession stand right over here. Do you want to? I think I saw some strawberry snapple. And then I went in, and there was like a floaty mattress blown up, and these girls were playing with themselves, and they were doing it for a camera that was live streaming. And the guy was like, "Just go in there and watch." And we're walking there, very out of my element. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, I don't know what I expected to see, but yeah. it was not this. Uh, Brad and I, again, kind of giggling to each other, being like, because could we just, the awkwardness of us just walking in and standing in like this garage where these girls, and then a guy comes in and they all just start going to it. And I was like, I go, Brad, I go, D-, he goes, yeah, we can leave now. <laughs> oh my God. And we're standing there. I was like, I felt so out of place. I was yeah. like, should we have started to clap? Like, yeah. Did you find the, uh, Alpha Coleman? Or whatever. The Alpha Komen. Hilarious, oh Tasso. God. Oh, my God. If I had asked, do you think it might be under where you squirted, sweetheart, the Alpha Komen? Oh. It's a Jewish, it's a piece of matzah that the Jews eyed for. You know what? The whole backstory will take longer than, and Sorry. there you go again. Oh, uh, my God. As they're coming, you're like, is there a Venmo I can support you? Or is, <laughs> is it? You guys seem like you're good. Do you need? I did see there was a, uh, you guys were running low on towels. Did yeah. you want me just to grab one of the uh, plastic Costco wraps yeah. that the planners came in? Um, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Really enjoyed your epic special. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I like that. I just would love if he was watching at some point of, of anything. Maybe not even my Whoa. specific special, but just like... That was fucking deep. I, I, liked you. I liked your stuff on stage down there. That was nice. Watching at any point, yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot, he's got a lot of channels to flip through. Yeah. <laughs> or she. I mean, I don't know. Is it, is it, is God or man or woman? I, you know, I'm open to both. Okay. Now that I'm saying that, what do you yeah. think? I really don't know. Maybe. It's just like a question for Pete Holmes. <laughs> Pete Holmes has I a. I think it's yes. Ariana Grande up there. Just a replica of her. Okay, that's what I'm saying. She's so I feel like she's still down here, ethereal. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got, we got someone that looks like that. I, I yeah. would rather believe that than just fucking, you know, some Tom Selleck looking motherfucker. Yeah, she has her song God is a Woman because it's her. Good night, everybody. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is... Click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Oh, I don't know how to blink.